Hello there and welcome to the series of videos looking at the content of A-level further maths. Here we're looking at representing linear transformations with matrices. So some transformations can be represented with matrices and this is how matrices can be used in real life applications. Um, so we'll have a look at then at what of our GCSE uh, transformations, reflection, rotation, translation and enlargement, can be represented by a matrix. So let's have a look at these three transformations here then. So the first transformation, S, uh, adds on 4 to the x coordinate and subtracts 1 from the y coordinate. We'll see if that's a linear transformation. Transformation T uh, is just a bit of a combination of x's and y's really. So we're going to double x and subtract y for the x coordinate and we're going to add the x and the y coordinate for the y coordinate. This next transformation here um, sends x, y to double of y and then we're going to take the negative square of the x-coordinate to send to our, from our y-coordinate. Now there are a couple of rules that we have to follow uh, for it to be a linear transformation. So it has two properties. It can only involve linear transformations of x and y, so no powers of x. So immediately we can kind of strike off this transformation u here. And also the origin 0, 0 must not be moved by this transformation. So this one here, well, whatever you have as x, if x and y are both 0, you're going to end up with 0 on the top and 0 on the bottom. But if x and y are 0 here, then we're going to have well, still 4 on the top and minus 1 on the bottom. So that's going to move the coordinate 0, 0. So under the second rule here, transformation s is not a linear transformation because the origin is moved and in this case um, it is moved whereas it should not be moved so it does only involve linear transformations of x there's no powers in this transformation but the origin does move with the second one transformation t that abides by both of the rules for a linear transformation there's no powers of x and it doesn't move the zero zero coordinate and for this one here um, it does involve powers of x. The 0, 0 coordinate doesn't move, but that doesn't matter really. That is not a linear transformation either. So it's only t that we can use to represent uh, by a matrix. Okay? These are valid transformations. I'm not saying they're not valid transformations. They're perfectly fine transformations. But this is the only one <coughs> in which we can use a matrix to represent. Okay. Just looking back at uh, the transformation S here, it looks like it's just a translation type um, transformation. It's moving the x-coordinate to the right by 4, and it's moving the y-coordinate down by 1. So effectively, this is a translation um, transformation. So translations are not uh, able to be represented by matrices. And we'll hopefully see that the rest of them are. So, a uh, linear transformation is defined by this um, type of uh, transformation here, where it's some multiple of the x-coordinate, add some multiple of the y-coordinate. It could have sub subtract in there. Um, it could have zero as, as the x part. Um, but it's just some number times by the x or the y part, and we can add or uh, we can add those together if we want as well. So, how would we represent this by a matrix? It can be represented by this matrix here. So, let's just have a look at how this would work. So if you put the matrix A, B, C, D next to the matrix of X, Y and you times out the matrix, you're going to get exactly this transformation here. X times the Y and moving across and down. B times add B times Y. That's what you get on the top. And for the bottom row, C times X add B times D times Y, which is what you'll get on the bottom row. So you can kind of just look at the coefficients on your transformation here and that's what will make up your matrix okay so it's as straightforward as that so let's have a look at trying to find the matrix for this transformation here 2y plus x um, and 3x for the y coordinate and for v as well so for the first one here Let's try and write it in the in the correct form. I try and rearrange this order on the top here. The fact that the y's before the x may may trip me up. Hopefully it won't. And I've got no y's on the bottom. So just remember that you may not have to write it down, but just think about it. you've got no y's on the bottom row there. And now what you need to do is just pull off the 
coefficients. So we'll have one x value and moving across and down where that y coordinate would be, we want two of those y's. And for the second row, we want three of the x's to start with, but no y's. So that's why a zero is there. We can do the same thing for this matrix here, this transformation here as well. So it might be an idea to think of it um, in this form here, where you've got no x's on the top row and negative two y's on the top row as well. And on the bottom, we've got three x's and one y added together. So thinking about what their coefficients are, we've got no x's on the top and minus two y's on the uh, top as well. Three x's on the bottom and one y on the bottom as well. So just imagine expanding it with this xy vector and hopefully what you'll get in your expansion is this, um, is this transformation here. Okay, so what we can do now with these transformation vectors or transformation um, matrices is transform a set of coordinates. So the question here is uh, the square has these coordinates here. Find the coordinates of the vertices of the image S after the transformation by the matrix minus 1, 2, 2, 1. Okay, so the way that we would transform these matrices, th these coordinates here, is <coughs> by timesing two matrices together. And the second matrix comes from a combination of all of these coordinates here. So this is our first matrix. That will go at the front of our calculation. And then these, co these coordinates here will form us a second matrix. Okay. Now the coordinate matrix actually doesn't just go from left to right and then carry on down for each of the next coordinates. The coordinates go in vertically. So the coordinate 1, 1 will go in here. The coordinate 3, 1 will go in here. The coordinate 3, 3 will go in here. And the coordinate 1, 3 will go in here. Okay, so the coordinates slot into their matrix vertically rather than horizontally like they are written as a, a coordinate up there. So now what we do is we take our matrix transformation and times it by the coordinates. And it's always in this order. The first matrix is transformation matrix. The second matrix is coordinate matrix. Don't ever get those two the wrong way around. It's always the transformation matrix first, and then it's the coordinate matrix second. So in this case here, we've got a two by two by a two by four, so we can multiply those. So let's go ahead. So remember, we go along the row, down the column. So minus one times one is one, add two times one, that's one. And then moving across to get the next top row cell is minus 1 times 3, add 2 times 1. Moving across into this next column here, still on the top row, we've got minus 3, add 6, that's uh, 3. And carrying this on, moving on to the bottom row, using the bottom row of your first matrix and each of the columns in your second matrix, we get this matrix here, 1, minus 1, 3, 5, 3, 7, 9, 5. But remember, their columns are their coordinates now. Okay, so it, it matches up exactly. So for example, if I was to take this 3, 3 coordinate here, that 3, 3 coordinate has been transformed to the coordinate 3, 9. And the fourth row, fourth column will transform to the fourth column, the first column will transform to the first column, and the second column will transform to the second column. So it all nicely lines up in order of their transformation that's happened. So we now have new vertices for our square, S, at these coordinates here. Okay. So what will this look like? Well, the original set of coordinates formed this square here, and then the new vertices form this square here. So it will um, it will preserve the shape um, that you have. It may stretch it in one direction, it may not. In this case, uh, it hasn't, but it's also rotated it a bit around as well. So this is how we can use matrices um, in real life applications. So this is also how um, computer some computer programs um, perform uh, transformations or perform movements. They apply a matrix to a set of coordinates and that helps move their digital character around 
in their um, in their video. Okay, so your turn to have a go at these two questions here then. The first question here is just a bit of find the matrix to do with these transformations. And the second one here is transform the coordinates. Okay then, so for the second one, uh, sorry, for the first one here we could say that this is just 2x plus y and then it's 0 minus y on the bottom. Certainly that's how I would think about it. So therefore the matrix that we're going to have for P is going to be 2x's and 1y on the top, 0x's on the bottom and negative 1y on the bottom. Okay, so that's the matrix for the first question there. The matrix for the second question, Q, well on the top row I don't want any x's and I want minus 1y and on the bottom row I want 1x and 2y's. So that's the matrix for that one there. So pretty straightforward, the first one, let's have a look at the second one as well. So we've got this matrix transformation S and we've got these three coordinates. So all that we have to do is multiply the two together with the matrix transformation at the front and then the coordinates substituted in in their columns into this matrix here. So let's go ahead now and multiply out the matrix here. <clears throat> so it's going to be minus 1 times 1 is 1, add 0 times um, 1 is 0, so we don't need to add on anything there. Minus 2, add 0, and minus 5, add 0. And for the second row here, it's just going to be 1, 3, and 1, because we don't want any multiple of the top row, and we want one copy of the bottom row. Excellent, good. So that's all you have to do for that question. I just want to briefly show you what would happen to this shape here um, if we draw out the coordinates. So the original set of coordinates were minus 1, 1, so that A coordinate will go here. 2, 3, so the next coordinate would go here, let's call that B. And then 5, 1 will go here, we'll call that coordinate C. Now where did each of these coordinates end up? Well the first coordinate ends up at 1, 1, let's call that A prime. The second coordinate ended up at minus 2, 3, so up here, let's call that B prime. And the third coordinate here ended up at minus 5, 1, so we'll call that C prime. Now can you see what's happened from this original set of coordinates to this final set of coordinates here? Now hopefully what you can see is that they have been reflected in the y-axis here. So we're going to look in later videos at how we can spot um, what type of transformation a matrix is. But in this case here, it's really obvious to spot that in this case here we have a reflection in the y-axis because all of the points are now on the different side than they were before. Anyway, that was going off on a little rant there. Do forgive me. Thanks very much for watching this video. Have lots of practice on exercise 7a um, and make sure you've um, got these calculations and know how to form these matrices before we move on to the next step. Thanks for watching.